In this video, I'll give you 10 tips for playing Terra. Let's get right into it. Don't try to farm gold if you don't have any level 70 characters yet. The difference between the amount of gold you get in lower level dungeons when compared to endgame is huge, so it is way more time efficient to level up first and then start farming. If you try to farm gold before you reach endgame, you will just waste your time. Playing one single character has advantages. You only need to learn how to play one class, you only have to upgrade one set of gear, and so on. It also has drawbacks though. Each character is limited to 16 vanguards per day and has a limited amount of adventure coins. Events are usually limited per character as well. For example, the Halloween events usually have a dungeon where three players have to get into cannons and protect a pile of candy from monsters. You can only run this a limited amount of times on each character per day, and the more characters you have, the more you can farm. Once your main character has decent gear, it might be a good idea to save up vanguards and coins on your main, so you can run the harder dungeons. A second character with the lower gear will be a nice alternative to spam easy dungeons and still have coins left for the fun stuff. If you want to become a master in each crafting skill, you will need at least 5 characters anyway. If you're a PvP player, then playing all classes will help you understand the different attacks, which will make it easier for you to counter other players. The best enemy is the one you know. Keeping separate stacks of materials and gold for each character seems like a good idea, since it helps you keep track of how much you spend on each character. However, it is best if you farm on all characters and invest most of the resources into your main. Once your main is ready for the hardest dungeons you want to run, then you can spend more resources on other characters. In the end, this will be a lot faster than farming on each character separately. If there is a class you really like playing, but you're not very good at it, then farming lower dungeons on that character will help you improve. In that case, you also don't really need to upgrade your gear much. You can save more resources for your main or other characters. Storing materials in the bank also saves inventory space. If you have the same materials stored on two characters, then each material takes up a total of two slots. If you store them in the bank, then they only take up one slot. You can buy bank expansions at the trade broker. Investing in those is definitely worth it. When you reach level 65, make sure you complete the questline called the two banquets as soon as possible. Not only will you get a full set of level 65 gear at the start of this questline, but you'll also get Glyph Points and Apex skills. Don't forget to put on the new gear before you fight the dragon in Valica though. Once you have the Apex skills, look at an up-to-date guide for your class and make sure you understand how to play it. Each class has some skills that they have to use every few seconds. Make sure you place them so you can easily reach them without looking at your keyboard. There are also some skills that have to be accessed multiple times in every dungeon, but less often in general. Your burn skills are a good example. They usually have long cooldowns, so they come up less often. Since you don't have to use them all the time, you can put those where you can still access them relatively easily, but it's fine if you have to look at the keyboard for a second. If you play more than one character, you can also place similar skills on the same keys, to reduce confusion after switching from one to another.
Joining a guild is a good way to meet new people and to find other players to join for dungeon runs. Guilds can also get skills that increase stats of their members, so by joining a guild your character might get stronger. There are guilds with requirements for gear or player skill, but there are also guilds that accept new players. Some guilds help their members with things such as gear setup or practice runs for example. If you're a PvP player, then you might want to join a guild that takes part in civil unrest or guild versus guild battles. Discord is very useful for communicating with your guild or with friends if you disconnect during a dungeon or if you have trouble logging in. Even if you don't plan on doing voice chat, it is still worth using Discord. You can find guides for any class and dungeon and usually the Discord servers can provide you with new information as soon as it is available. The Terra Master Race server is a good place to start because here you can find links to other Discord servers and you can ask questions if you have any or if you need help with anything. You can find the invite link in the description below. You can teleport to Highwatch for free. All you have to do is open the Vanguard window, which is bound to the H key by default, and click on the Redeem button in the bottom left. You can also use the Vanguard window to teleport to dungeon entrances for free. First find the dungeon in the list, then click on the box that contains all the information about the Vanguard quest. This will open another window that has a teleport button. At the moment of making this video, it can sometimes happen that the Vanguard window doesn't show any quests at all. This can be fixed by completing one of the quests or by teleporting to the Gilly Glade entrance. To get there you have to buy a Valix Opportunity Scroll at the Vanguard Quartermaster in Highwatch or use the free scroll if you have elite status. In this game, bosses often have mechanics that you need to know if you want to be able to complete the dungeon. Some of those mechanics can be difficult to learn, even with a guide, so you should not enter a dungeon unprepared. You should always try to find a guide and learn at least the key mechanics before attempting to run a new dungeon. Most people won't mind if you're new or still learning, as long as you know the mechanics. It also helps to tell party members that you're new before starting. This one may surprise some of you, but during combat you should not be looking at your own character, or even at the ground. Instead you should be looking at the monster or the player you're fighting. This way you can react way faster and recognizing patterns becomes a lot easier. Some boss mechanics can be quite fast and you have to recognize the pattern before the boss starts casting the dangerous part of the combo. One example is the double whirlwind into Punishing Blow in Forbidden Arena. Punishing Blow is cast so quickly after double whirlwind that you won't have enough time to dodge it if you didn't recognize the combo before he starts casting Punishing Blow. I just said that you should be looking at the enemy you're fighting, but you still need to have a good overview of what's going on around you. Zoom out the view as far as possible, and as I said in my last video, make sure the view distance is not limited in the settings. That way you can use your peripheral vision to keep track of the environment. Well, those were 10 tips for Terra players. How many of these things did you do already? Is there anything you would add to the list? I still have a few more tips, but I wanted to keep this video relatively short, so I might make a part 2 in the future. Anyway, leave a like if this video was helpful and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!